Hi, this is Scott Bradfield. This is, uh, we're in chapter 8 of reading Ulysses in the bathtub. And we're not actually, we didn't bring our bathtub. We brought a dog. This is, what is it? So this is the all dog. Is my mist here? Wait a second. This is the all dog edition of the, uh, the in the bathtub series. And uh, she has some purpose here, which she seems to fulfill every day. And I'm going to basically just take you through chapter eight. The uh, This is very, we're back in Bloom's head and we're kind of wandering around a lot. The chapters are getting longer and this is a good chapter and I enjoy this chapter, but they're starting to get longer and the first time through I find it a little frustrating. But this is a good one and this is basically based around, uh, it's, it's, it's must be 11 or 12 o'clock in the day and Bloom is hungry and the entire chapter is about being hungry and eating and food and Bloom and and Bloom has two things on his mind in this chapter uh, well three things that are always on Bloom's mind eating he loves to eat he likes to know where money comes from and how much people are making on certain jobs and how much money he has owed to him and and women good-looking girls including his wife Molly who he's still quite excited about even though she's not sleeping with him okay we start on page 90 we're looking in a candy store window, I believe. I believe. I think it's called Graham Lemons. And it starts off Pineapple Rock Lemon Platt Butterscotch. A sugar sticky girl shoveling scoopfuls of creams for a Christian brother. So he's looking in the window, I assume, and looking at all the candy in the, uh, in the, uh, in the display window. And in the second paragraph, a somber YMCA young man, watchful among the warm, sweet fumes of Graham Lemons, placed a throwaway in a hand of Mr. Bloom. Heart-to-heart -heart talks. Blah? Me? No. B-L-O-O, -O, he thinks. Bloom? For Susie starts to read the word. Blood of the Lamb. It's a, it's a religious pamphlet being passed around. So now he walks down to the river. And again, this is a nice example. Keep remembering how Joyce never gets just lost in the thoughts of his characters. He's always got the time and the process of moving through Dublin, almost in every sentence and in every thought. His slow feet walked him riverward reading. Are you saved? All are washed in the blood of the Lamb. He's walking along reading this pamphlet. God wants blood victim, birth, hymen, martyr, war, foundation of a building, sacrifice, kidney, burnt offering, druid's altars. Elijah is coming. Dr. John Dowie, restorer of the church in Zion, is coming, is coming, is coming, all heartily welcome. And so as we are walking and we're thinking, we're getting Bloom's reactions and his skimming through the pamphlet and then reading the, the urgent words, the large words in bold, we're moving riverward, so we're constantly moving our, moving through. Um, the next page, top of 191, he sees uh, Stephen's sister. Which one is it? I don't know if it says her name in here or not. And he sees her sister, and he reflects Daedalus's daughter. This is the Stephen's, referring to Stephen's father. And he says, you know, he knows that the wife that, Stephen's mother died, and since then the family's been falling apart, and everything's everything's going to hell in that family. And uh, he starts to reflect on the craziness of the Catholics, insisting that people keep having baby after baby after baby, and he says, "Increase and multiply." Did you ever hear of such an idea? Just too much, too many people. You relax, dog. My dog is, gets excited about Joyce. He's, he's uh, the ridiculousness of these families having more babies than they can feed. And we're still on the notion of feeding and eating. Um, we walk along. He throws the, he crumples up this Blood of the Lamb pamphlet and throws it into the water. And he sees a, he's very interested in advertising whenever he sees ads, because that's sort of been his life and what he makes money at. So he looks out on a buoy. There's a plasterboard buoy of, selling Kino's trousers and again he's reflecting on how much money you could make from these at the bottom of 193 he goes through a series of reflections about ads and he starts to 
go on a reflection about drugs to help people who have uh, syphilis or venereal disease. And as soon as he thinks about that, he thinks about a chap with the dose burning in him, bottom of page 193, and then suddenly he cuts to a, if he, oh, eh, no, no. It's these little guttural uh, thoughts interfering in his, his walk, and what he's thinking there, obviously, is what if Blazes, who's having sex with his wife about later in the day, has the clap and passes it on to him. As he walks further along, 194, again, you need to take this chapter slow. It, it's very reflective. It's lots of memory, but we're still making progress in, in the walk. He's basically going, the, the entire plot of this chapter is to go to the library to do some research on the, the Keys advertisement that he's been, he's been selling to the Freeman newspaper. And on the way, he has lunch. Here's your, that's your plot. As he's walking along, he sees five men where, uh, doing another advertisement, H-E-L-Y apostrophe S, five men with these letters advertising Healy's stationers. It's kind of like a W.H. Smith of its time, and it's reflect, and Bloom reflects that he used to work for Healy's. And when Bloom worked for Healy's, you know, he's watching these kind of big overweight men walking around with these t-shirts, and he thinks he had a much better idea, which is to have a lot of good-looking girls dressed up like secretaries, typing. You should push them through town, and, and people will all be interested in girls typing. Um, he thinks about how much he hated that job because he used to have to collect money from the nunneries. And again, every time, think, almost any time he can move towards sex, Bloom thinks of sex, and recalling how hard it was getting money from the nunneries, because they never had any money, he remembers this cute nun who he thought, if she wasn't a nun, he might like to have some fun with. Okay, so he then he reflects a lot of on Millie and, and Molly and their first days together. He remembers their first home with Molly. It was a small room, snug little room, and raising Millie and being a father to her. And as he's walking along thinking about this, he runs into Mrs. Breen, bottom of page 197. One of the funniest parts of the, the piece is running into Mrs. Breen and the upshot of that little passage, so you hit a little series of dialogue, a little passage of dialogue here, 197, 198, is that Mrs. Breen tells Bloom, they talk about Mina, I get the names wrong because he gets the name wrong at first, there's a Mina Purifoy, there's a woman, um, well, that doesn't come up for later, they start talking about meeting a Purifoy on page 200, who's been for three days at the lying-in hospital in Hole Street having a baby that's stuck. And, and, and Bloom starts to reflect on how difficult that would be to be sitting there trying to have a baby for three days. And that scene does come up later. The hospital shows up later. But before that, Mrs. Breen tells him a story about her husband, who's obviously a nut, Mr. Breen. And Mr. Breen is going to a lawyer. Mrs. Breen is outside, and her husband is inside, very upset. He wants to sue somebody, because somebody sent him a postcard. And on the postcard, there are only two letters, U, P. And I think they start to tell us later. I think later we figure out what it is. I can't remember now what it stands for. But he gets a postcard in the post that just says U, P. And he, he's a bit crazy and obsessive, and he's decided he's going to sue somebody, even though he has no idea who sent him this card. So he's in at the he's in at the lawyers, and you take action for ten thousand pounds. And Mrs. Breen um, knows her husband's mad. And as they're sitting in, as as Bloom and Mrs. Breen are talking, another nut comes, another character comes walking down the street. Um, page two hundred one, middle of page two hundred one. A bony form strode along the curbstone from the river, staring with a rapt gaze into the sunlight through a heavy stringed glass. Tight as a skull piece, a tiny hat gripped his head. From his arm, a folded dust coat, a stick and an umbrella dangled to his side. Watch him, Mr. Bloom says. He always walks outside the lamppost. Watch. This guy's obsessive. He doesn't want to walk with inside the lamppost on, on the sidewalk. He wants to walk outside them. 
and his name is Cashel Boyle O'Connor Fitzmorris Tisdall Farrell. And Mrs. Breen looks at this nutter, and she says, basically, my husband's heading in this character's direction, you know, obsessing. And later, he, the husband comes out, and Mrs. Breen says, I gotta go. And so she has to run off with her crazy husband. So we have, we move along. I don't want to go through all of this, but a few characters' names start coming up. We have A.E. He's going to start showing up. I think he's a local poet, Mr. George Russell. He could very well be based on a real person. I can't remember, but he may be based on a real person. And he's the local literary figure. And he's got a woman he hangs out with, Lizzie Twig. And Bloom doesn't like her. He doesn't like the literary types, particularly the women, because they don't dress nice. He doesn't like them wearing loose socks and stuff. So he's all, everything with Bloom is, you know, is girls. Uh, so he keeps moving along. He uh, tries to decide where he's going to eat. And he decides to go to this place called Burton's Restaurant. And we see some people on the streets as he walks along. He sees, again, the political figure of Parnell is always haunting uh, uh, this period of literature, of, of Joyce's work. And he sees Parnell's brother on the street. Um, he starts to reflect on Sinn Féin and some of the political issues going on then, just as you know, part of the, the life that he lives and home rule, issues of home rule. And this goes on, he goes quite along. There's a lot of issues, and while he sees people, he reflects on them. Um, he doesn't get, he doesn't like the Lizzie Twig, the literary person, because her stockings are loose over her ankles. Oh, God, he's so, so upset about that. He just doesn't know, doesn't, you can't see her cute ankles with these, these, these sloppy stockings. Now, we, go, we see a guy named Bob Dorn who's out drinking. He's on his bender. A lot of these people will probably come back. And now we get, I'm skipping forward to about 2, 14, 15. Bloom walks into a restaurant called Burton Restaurant. And it's midday. Everyone's having lunch. And he walks into this sort of place. I mean, I, it's a very funny passage. If you've ever been, particularly some Midwestern huge steak restaurant or something, where you just have piles of big, fat Americans eating huge piles of meat. And as he walks into this uh, this uh, restaurant, he just sees all these people chewing and spitting and, and, they're, and uh, um, you know, they're taking bits of bone out and putting it on the plate and there's spits of spit on the sawdust floors and there's a, and the smell of piss from the urinals. And, the, and he's just disgusted by all these just animals eating. It's a very funny passage, and there's some great physical detail in it. People, uh, a fellow ramming a knife full of cabbage down as if his life depended on it. So he looks at this place briefly, and he says, i got to get out of here. And he walks down to a pub, page 217. He goes to Davy Burns Pub, and he's looking at the shelves. He runs into some people there he knows, Nosy Flynn, and... He looks on the shelves to think about what to eat, and he thinks he sees some plum trees potted meat again. All right, remember? Uh, incomplete if you're not getting your meat potted. So that, that little joke keeps coming back in the book. Um, he runs into, and there's a few people he meets here. Is that Tom? Is it Nosy Flynn he's talking to? Yeah, Nosy Flynn he's talking to. And I think it's Nosy Flynn that's got a, he's got, it's cold, and he's got snot dripping on his nose. And Bloom sees them as dewdrops. I think it's Nosy Flynn. But they start to talk about Molly. And Nosy Flynn asks, how's your wife? He says, oh, she's going on this special tour that with Blazes O'Boylan. She's a singer. She's going to do a tour. And there's, uh, he says, oh, that's the style. Who's getting it up? And the joke is not, anytime, the, anytime you see these sort of sexual innuendo jokes in Joyce, they usually, what they think, what they sound like. He's talking about who's who's running, who's organizing the song fest and the song tour. And he refers to as getting it up. And it's Blazes is definitely getting it up. So he watches Nosy. It is Nosy. Um, and he sees this dew drop. While he's eating, he, he orders a gargonzola sandwich and his strip cuts in. He has a sort of methodical way of eating his food. You notice that with Bloom. He likes to do all his food in a certain way. He buys a sandwich. He cuts it in strips. And he starts to eat them. And they start talking about the horse races. There's a lot of talk of the horse race in this chapter. And he's watching the dewdrops coming off the, uh, off the uh, thing. 
Let me see. I'm going to pause just for a second. Okay, I let the dog out. So we have his meeting with um, with them. He's eating his sandwich. Lots of reflection. On page 224, while he's eating, he thinks about, he's often thinking about sex with Molly, particularly when they first went out. And she, and she was, and they were both young. And he remembers a, a passage, he remembers a time when they made love outside in the, uh, near, I forget where this is, near, near a bay or something, but 224. And he remembers this time when they were lying together. Again, everything's about food while he's eating. When Molly had chewed up some seed cake and she put it, and she, was, she had chewed it, and then while they were kissing and, and, and making out, she put the food from her mouth into his mouth. Um, that, that, I think we come back to that in Molly's soliloquy at the end. So we go along. Now on page 225, while Bloom finishes, when he finishes eating, he has to go take a pee. So he has to go piss. And, and we have another one of these weird little transitions that, that Joyce did in the last chapter, and we'll do occasionally again, where Bloom actually gets up, walks out of the pub, and the point of view completely shifts, and we have a kind of fly-on-the-wall picture or theatrical uh, presentation of Nosy and several friends uh, talking and buying each other drinks and making jokes and talking about Bloom. I think at one time they make a joke that he's, he's quite tight. He'll never write a check for anybody. And... They, some of, they make a, they make some discussion about the, the, uh, the horse races. I didn't, I don't really follow that too closely or care too much. But there's a, there's a horse race that keeps running through this, and then on two twenty eight, cut straight back to Bloom, when he leaves the restaurant. So we actually watch, watch him leave through the point of view of these characters in the bar, and then two twenty eight, Mr. Bloom walked towards Dawson Street his tongue brushing his teeth smooth. So he's eaten, and now he's picking his food out of his mouth and, and, and finishing digesting all the stuff that he can find in there. We go along, he starts thinking about Nanetti. Once he gets paid, he wants to get paid for this ad he's selling, and people owe him money. And again, as soon as he gets money, he wants to buy silk petticoats for Molly, page 230. Middle of page 230, he meets a blind man. First him as a blind stripling. I think that just means he's a very skinny man. And Bloom wants to help him cross the street. There's a lot of talk, there's many points in this story where people think, both Bloom and Stephen think about blind, being blind. I, again, I can't remember, but in the past, I, again, I'm the, I don't have the great memory. I should to, to read Joyce. But they did talk about blindness, and it will keep coming up in the book, as I recall. Bloom helps the man across the street, and he thinks about all the amazing things that blind people can do, tuning pianos and so forth. And, and, and again, as soon as he starts going on a reflection, blind, what kind of jobs they do, how do they see the world, he always comes back to the same thing. I wonder what it's like touching a woman if you're blind. Do you, do you notice how, what the color of her skin is, for example? So he's always thinking about sex. Page 234, he's heading towards the library. Top of page 234 in this edition. Mr. Bloom came to Kildare Street. First, I must, library. He's going to the library to look up some old advertisements. New paragraph. Straw hat and sunlight. Tan shoes. Turned up trousers. It is. It is. His heart cropped softly. A little, th little tremor in his, th in his chest. And that's Blazes boiling. He sees Blazes, and he wants to avoid him. He doesn't want to talk to him. He's embarrassed. He's, he knows the guy's off with his wife, and he just doesn't know what to do. He's looking for things to read in his pocket. He brings out that again, again, death and the time thing, the, the one about kind of a Jewish utopian society or nature, nature preserve, whatever it was. And he, he starts to pretend to look at that, and he shoves it back in, and then he tries to get out of the way, and he goes to, gets to this gate, and at the end of the chapter, he, he avoids blazes, and he thinks, safe. And when he feels safe, he's reaching in his pocket. At the same time, he feels that lemon soap 
that he picked up earlier in the story. So it's this little recurring sense of safety in that lemon soap that he's, he's he enjoyed, a clean, clean cleansing this uh, this experience. Okay, so uh, the good chapter, very funny, a little too long. All the chapters are a little too long from this point, I think. Um, but you definitely look at that. You read it carefully. You'll enjoy it, and particularly you'll enjoy the the. The, the, meat eat, the meat eaters in that horrible restaurant and some of the dialogue and Mrs. Breen's crazy husband and the UP, which I can't remember what it stands for, but it, it does come up later. Uh, but it, and, the, and the character, th those two crazy characters, and the guy's going to sue everybody for it. Okay, uh, we're going to try it. I'll try to do a couple quickly in the next few weeks, but uh, I never know how long, what time I have to do these. Okay, bye. This was the all-dog and now the non-dog edition of reading books in the bathtub.